Now, the NFLPA announced that the executive board had voted unanimously to approve the proposed changes. And now this, uh, some of these things that you're seeing right here, go to the NFLPA Board of Player Reps, this proposal outlining, among other things, an 80-man roster deadline by August 16th and the salary cap remaining the same for the 2020 season, a cap floor of $175 million in 2021, and the possibility of being hired. Joining us now, the dynamic duo of Jeff Darlington and Lewis Riddick to break <laughs> this all down. So, Jeff, uh, let me start with you. What exactly has transpired today, and do you have a sense of whether or not the players will sign off on it? Funny you should ask that, Hannah. A very happy text from the member, a member of the NFLPA Executive Committee. The vote has been approved. The player reps just a minute ago did approve the vote. Training camp is on. Football will be back as scheduled. That was the final hurdle that this side needed. The NFLPA had met earlier today. They approved the owner's proposal, and it had to go to the player's reps. It did that. The player vote goes through. They got through their financial hurdles that they had, opt-out clauses that they had, uh, acclimation periods that they had. We are good to go. Football will begin on time. So Jeff Darlington with the breaking news as we speak. <laughs> I love it. Lewis, uh, your thoughts on hearing that we're good to go. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great news. I mean, now, quite honestly, look, a lot of hard work has been put into this, obviously, on the part of the NFLPA and the owners. A lot of it, hard work has been put in, the, in order to get to this point. But now, the real crucial work kind of really begins when the players actually get to the facilities and they actually start to come together and actually really engage in actually playing the game of football. Well, not necessarily playing the game of football, but just being around one another. That's when really the nail biting starts. That's when all of these medical and training staffs, all these plans and protocols that they have put into place, you know, individually from club to club. That's when they see whether or not they really thought this through and they really have a great plan to make sure that they're keeping the players safe, they're keeping the coaches safe, and then in turn they're able to keep their families safe at home because that's really what this is all about. Look, you knew eventually the economics of this would be worked out in some form or fashion because no one, didn't, no one wanted to see 2020 go by and there not be football. It's really a matter of keeping everyone safe. And again, it's not just the players because the coaches and the support staffs mm -hmm. have greater risk associated with them than even the players do, because obviously you're talking about coaching staffs and head coaches and trainers and support mm -hmm. people who are up there, who are getting up there in age, who may, who may have um, underlying health conditions that really put sure. them at risk. Now it's time to really put those procedures and protocols into place, and you're just hoping that everyone crossed all their T's and dotted all their I's so we can actually have a safe training camp. And, and Jeff, what are the procedures by which a player, sure. if they are uncomfortable, they have family concerns, um, they're not comfortable with their team in the way they're handling the coronavirus protocols, what are the implications right. of that contractually for the players at this point if they want to opt out? So as I understood it going into this call that, that just occurred and the vote did occur, uh, that it was going to be a situation where players are going to have 10 days to decide whether they want to opt out. And there are going to be two designations to that opt-out situation. For those who do have uh, underlying risks, those people will receive a bigger stipend in an accrued season, uh, which is very important. Now, if you don't have uh, underlying conditions but choose to opt out, you will still receive a stipend, but it will be less. So they'll have two designations. One other important note here that I've heard, uh, there were discussions about the prospect of if you have a family member who becomes sick with coronavirus at some point, you can then fall into uh, the category with the, the the previous one that receives yeah. the bigger stipend. So it's it's I don't want to go too far in the weeds here right. on things, but basically the players are, are now happy with the opt out clause. Uh, they feel like they are being protected. And I should also note, they also feel like the acclimation period, that was something they fought very hard for. Mm -hmm. We're probably not going to see a real practice in the NFL for about two weeks, almost three weeks, 16 days before they're actually practicing. So there'll be a, a, a quite an acclimation period to get to that point. And some teams will have to ramp up quicker than others. Some are better prepared than others. And the other part of this is obviously the finances, Lewis, and these huge losses that the owners are going to incur, whether or not they play a full season or not, right? That is an absolute given. Yeah. And how much of those losses the players would have to absorb. Do you think the players got a fair deal in this regard? 
Yeah, I, I think it was important on the part of management, the individual teams and management, you know, offices as well as the players to make sure that, look, the salary cap remained what it was going to be in 2020 and it was not going to be reduced, you know, at this point in time where it would have sent a lot of, you know, General managers are absolutely running for cover with their hair on fire as far as trying to get under the salary cap and be salary cap compliant. And then them setting a floor for $175 million for the salary cap in 2021, which could then be adjusted higher depending upon, you know, how TV money comes into play, how gambling revenue comes into play and what have you to, to really push the salary cap back up. I mean, those are all very, very good things that lends some degree of certainty for salary cap planning purposes on the part of management and for the players themselves. You know, they know also that, look, sal you know, our salaries will continue to grow. Our salaries are protected. These opt-out clauses are obviously are very, very important. Players mm -hmm. want to know that they're protected against getting sick, that their family members are protected against getting sick. I mean, this is a huge, huge undertaking, Hannah. I think that cannot be understated. The amount of, you know, time and energy that's going into trying to have a football season in these kind of conditions is tremendous. And what they're pulling off is nothing short of a miracle. Yeah, it really came down to the 11th hour. Now we'll see if the reality matches the theory. Uh, the NFL season is 48 days away and all teams Report on Tuesday. Jeff with a breaking news live in the first minute of the Sports <laughs> Center. I love it. Good Jeff, job, darling. Jeff. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.